Hello YouTube, watch this. Man, I always end up hurting myself. Hola amigo, I have returned. Almost 10k, join. Because of popular demand, we will fix the flicker for the bone ESP. The bone ESP from a while back did the job, but it had an issue where it would constantly appear and disappear, resulting in flickering. To fix this, we will implement the bone features into the updated basic ESP. This should fix the flickering, but it might lag a bit depending on your specs and settings. If you subscribe, like, or write a comment, I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it, and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Swed C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled, and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. So, before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2, we will right click on the properties, we will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking, checking a map, and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. All right, so on a practice game on Dust 2, we will open our final project. So if the code is correct and offsets are updated, when we click here, it should now open a little menu, basic ESP, but now with the bone color option, and we should see some bones on the entities. You can see here the usual bone points now without uh, the flicker. Much better from or than the bef before. We can see. We can see the bones of the enemies. You can also see that uh, when they go further away, the bones start to freeze. But that's just because they're too far away, and I think Counter Strike Two doesn't want to use up. All of their resources. Now I don't see this as an issue. You could probably figure out some way to fix this if you wanted. But enjoy this tutorial now. I'll see you guys later. Now to do this tutorial you will need the CS2 basic ESP. You can get it on the YouTube channel or the coffee page, your choice. It will also be better if you have the bone ESP. You could also complete it without the bone ESP by writing off me, and that's fine. Now, to get rid of the flickering, we will have to sort of move the elements of the bone ESP to the basic ESP, and then we can build upon our sort of safety checks on the basic ESP. So let's start. Now, the first change will be inside of the entity class. Here we will add the bone positions, 3D and 2D, and then the distance, which is a float. After that, we will grab the calculation functions from the bone ESP. So let's transfer the read bones first, make it into a static function, 
and add the sweat class as its argument or parameter. We will have to be using sweat64 here as well. Then we will grab the readbones 2 d function. We will replace the view matrix with a float array here and then change the world to screen function to have the screen size as its boundaries argument. And we're done with the calculating part. Let's move on to the renderer and add a color for the bones. We will change this via a color wheel later. We will also have a variable for the bone thickness. Let's just set it to 4. We scroll down to the menu part and copy paste our collapsing header with a color picker, but now we have the bone color. Make sure to refer to the bone color as well. All right, let's create the draw bones function. It will take in an entity and we will get the color and convert it to a uint. After that, now if you have the code, this will be incredibly easy for you, but we will copy paste the drawing order of the skeleton. So how we actually draw the figure. We copy paste this here and we're ready to go. We also need some new offsets, so we will go into the A2X CS2 dumper. Credit goes to him for this beautiful dumper where we can get updated offsets. We will get the model state under the skeleton and then the P game C node. Now you will also have to update all of the old ones because the game has updated since the ESP video, the bone ESP and the basic ESP. So make sure that all of the offsets, both offsets.cs and client.dll.cs offsets are updated before you continue. Let's head back to the program.cs file and now add the data to our entities. So we will read the C node of the current pawn with the sweat.read pointer, current pawn and pgame C node offset. Then once we have the C node, we can read the bone matrix address. So we will use the sweat.read pointer again with the C node, the model state, and then the DV bone matrix offset, which is equal to 0x80. So the first entity attribute we will populate is the distance. That will be equal to the vector 3.distance function. And we just put in our entity and the local player. Then we can change the bones to the calculate.readbones using the bone matrix and the sweat class makes it possible to finally read the bones 2D, which we can actually draw on the screen with the entity.bones, the view matrix, then the screen size. Now at the end, we can add a thread.sleep statement. This is up to you whether you want a large one, a small one, or none at all. You can check the CPU usage and choose what's best for you. We're actually done now and uh, let's try it in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter-Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable back and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, we can get banned otherwise. All right, so let's try our application out. Now, if the code is correct, if the offsets are updated, yada yada, it should now work. So in a practice game, um, Dust2, we will try it out. Okay, so we will open our project and click on play. If 
everything was working as intended, we should now see skeletons on our teammates, but also on our enemies now there. Um, they entered this. They did. Now, uh, you just need to sort of figure out how to not have the skeletons freeze, I suppose. If that's uh, an issue, 